Here's a tip geared towards you brand new techs out there. The call I get most when answering AC questions for techs is, do you think it's the capacitor? And normally when I get asked this question, I'm like, check with your meter, check the MFD setting on your meter and find out unless it's swollen up on the top. If it's rounded, like a soda can that sat in the freezer too long, then the capacitor's bad. This is redneck capacitor testing. You can see that this is bad visually. You don't need a meter. I'm not even gonna put test leads on this. There's no point. And just to verify that that disconnect actually worked, I'm gonna use my non-contact voltage tester to test that. Now I wanna show you what this looks like compared to a good capacitor. And it would be smart if you don't know anything about wiring to take a picture on how the wires were set up. But basically your Herm's gonna be the three pin, your fan the single or two, and the common's gonna have four pins. But here's our bad capacitor and here's our good capacitor. Notice how there's a indent in here and it's not popped above this while well, this one is just swollen up. Now capacitors can be bad and not swollen up. In this case, I would tell you to take your meter, turn it to the MFD setting or UF setting. We're gonna put one lead on common and one lead on Herm to test the compressor. This is a 30 MFD capacitor. So we want 30 MFD or something within five or 6% of that. And we can see that we have 31. And if we test the fan to common, we should have five MFD because this is a dual run capacitor and we're in spec. So this is a good capacitor. Herm, which means compressor, common, which is L2 of the contactor on this particular carrier model. The spade is actually a little loose That may have been why the old capacitor failed. So we are going to replace this wire. This is 14 gauge wire. It's very important to know the size of your wire because the spade is going to have to match. Now I'm gonna strip with the 14 gauge meter or ruler on my wire cutters. All wires are nice and intact. Here's my 1614 spade terminal. Twist that in there. And I'm gonna use the appropriate setting on my dedicated wire crimpers. I'll leave a link in the description. This is a very handy tool and it makes sure, it makes sure you get the crimp right every time. Give it a little tug. She ain't going nowhere. Looks like it came straight from the factory. Now we can hook up our common to the capacitor and our fan. It's also imperative that you strap these capacitors. Don't leave them dangling. I say this because I see it all the time. Going to make sure there's no loose connections on the contactor. That one is very loose. I don't even need a torque wrench for that. And this one is extremely loose. You're not supposed to get a full turn out of these lug nuts. These ones are good. We've got a call from downstairs because the contactor is pulled in. And we are now running. Now, everything after this, I wouldn't recommend doing a redneck style. I'd actually recommend HVAC tools for the checking the cooling. We've got 5.8 amps on our 14 gauge common wire to the compressor. The fatter wire is gonna be the fan, but the fatter wire is actually only 16 gauge, which means the wire itself inside 
the insulation is smaller. We've got 0.5 on our fan motor. And fan motor's right at 0.5 max. And our compressor RLA amps, run load amps are nine. So we're 66% capacity, which I like. I've got my panel back on. All four screws holding the service panel back on. We're on a big rooftop. This unit's not labeled. I know what unit it is because I just worked on it and verified it. I'm not gonna, don't use a marker. I know a lot of you, this is all you have is a marker, but this is gonna fade after a year. What I do is I actually engrave it right where it can be seen. That way you don't have to screw around trying to find the unit. Although there is a trick to finding units on the rooftop. I've got my probes hooked up. And as you can see with that one and a half degree subcool and 20 degree superheat, we are a tad bit low, so. Always charge blend refrigerants upside down, liquid form, lead out the air from the line. And I've only got my vapor probe disconnected. I just find it easier to charge this way. There is an adapter for it, the uh, field piece job links, but I don't really like it. It doesn't really work well. So I'm just gonna add about enough refrigerant to get that sub cooling up there's my final readings i like that charge and i like it a lot and the reason i don't leak search when i only add a couple of pounds or just one pound is this i'm pretty sure this is just never charged right to begin with that's what i'm finding on a lot of these units that are just a tad bit undercharged to where they're still gonna cool but just not cool like they're supposed to and that can cause premature equipment failure putting our caps back on as always make sure those o-rings are in there this unit's cooling this fix is done now i'm off to the next one hope to see you there